Spring is construction season around our community. Road work, neighborhood improvements, and added amenities are all taking place. City engineer Kevin Krulik joins us on episode 113 of the Love and Lebanon podcast to update it all. Kevin looks ahead to Waterford and the Eli Lilly developments as well. The Love and Lebanon podcast starts now. Welcome to the Love and Lebanon podcast, highlighting all the great things happening in Lebanon, Indiana. Have an idea for an episode? Send an email to loveandlebanon at lebanon.in.gov. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on the podcast. And boy, what a day to be inside with it being so stormy, windy, all those things. But joining us on the podcast this time around is a guy who's still a bit waterlogged from, from being out at the, the Eulen slash Elmwood Bridge. City engineer Kevin Krulik joins us here on the podcast. Kevin, thanks for being here. Good, good morning, Joe. It's yeah, it's been an exciting morning, uh, trying to keep the car on the road and out of the rain while we are still pushing forward with construction activities this morning. And I heard you kind of coming because it was the squeak, squeak, squeak of the, of the wet shoes on the the linoleum or the tile out outside the office. But uh, it looks like some some work is continuing and kind of wrapping up on the final stages at Eulen slash Elmwood and the bridge work that has taken place there and you've been overseeing. Yeah, we're nearing the end. Uh, light at the end of the tunnel. We are milling off the existing road approaches on either side of the bridge this morning, getting ready for asphalt to go in tomorrow. And uh, at that point, we'll open the bridge back up. Uh, so we got some small closures today for that milling work, some small closures tomorrow for repaving work and uh and then essentially the bridge would be done, except for we've got some sodding, some fine grading and seeding to do. We've got some driveway uh, work to do, but essentially the bridge at that point would be uh, open for business. How good does it make you feel to see some of these projects come down the home stretch and, and just about culminate with completion and, and being back open to the public? It's good. You know, we had a pretty mild winter, so we, we, uh, we were able to work quite a bit into the winter and didn't take too much time off. We're back at it. And not only just us, but private development and construction is back at it. Uh, things are, it's, you know, it's April 1st. That's sort of the, the season when we start uh, headlong into construction season is, is that April 1st date. And uh, we're, we're there in force this week. And if we can kind of put a bow on another bridge project before we start to talk about some of the other ones over on Whit Road, uh, that project is is uh, on its home stretch as well. It kind of took a, a dormant stage, dormancy for the winter, and now kind of the, the fine tooth combing of, of some of the, the punch list items taking place. Is that yeah, right? yeah. I mean, that's putting it mildly. That, that project <laughs> has been um, one of your favorites. Well, it's, it's, it's not when as any of us had hoped it would go. Yeah. Uh, but we're, we're nearing the end now. Obviously, the bridge has been open for some time. Uh, contractors were on site yesterday uh, doing some prep work on the bridge rails for some final surface coating and sealing that has to happen. We've got uh, landscaping going in, some broken concrete driveways and sidewalks that are going to get repaired in the next couple of weeks. I, I would say, you know, another 30 days or so, we should have that wrapped up and that contractor out of there once and once and for all. And on this episode, everybody, we're talking to city engineer Kevin Krulik here on the Love and Lebanon podcast. And Kevin, before we go hot and heavy with different things that are happening within the community. Do you have kind of a, a, a mindset? We're going to talk about a lot of a lot of construction progress and, and processes. Mindset when it comes to spring and, and doing all these things, because as you mentioned, when April, beginning of April hits, which is where we're at now, construction stuff really starts to ramp up. Yeah, it's 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 that time of year, you know, and I know some people can look at that uh, with a negative perspective, you know, that means construction cones and delays and traffic and and more people coming through town for, for the construction activities. But I think all that, in my mind, really just signals opportunities. You know, it's opportunities that we have as a city to, to fix roads, to repair roads, to see bridges upgraded, uh, to see new development happening, see new, the new opportunities that that creates, whether those are housing opportunities or new job opportunities that are coming to our citizens. You know, I think those are those are generally good things. So yes, we have to we have to break some eggs to to make those omelets, you know, and we have to have those growing pains as we go through that. But at the end of the day, I think this development, this construction, these these growth patterns that we're seeing really signals positive things in long term for Lebanon, signals opportunities for all of us. A good point. And we're going to be talking about specific projects that target specific areas in our community. But if we can start with one that really is going to touch everybody in some way, shape or fashion, street work is getting ready to happen. And every year 
You've spearheaded the effort, you and the mayor, with targeting the roads in most need of some TLC and, and targeting those. Can you kind of update? It sounds like that process is about to begin within our community and, and really starting to hit some of those roads that, that really need it. Absolutely. You know, we take a systematic approach to our pavement asset management plans. We're actually redoing our pavement asset management plan this year. That's something we, we revisit every year, and those help us set priorities for the road work. Uh, we've got about three miles of road work that's planned for this year. We started early in the year with some of the, uh, the sidewalk ramp upgrades, and all that is complete now. And, and next week, uh, as we're uh, getting into April and asphalt plants are opening back up, we'll be milling and resurfacing those roads and putting a new fresh coat of asphalt on top of several roads around the city. And we got some major traffic on our social media platform when I posted a picture about Grant Street, that project ramping back up. Speaking of roads and and a main thoroughfare that's utilized near the school and and other parts of our community as well, that's ramping back up. And and can you talk about, I think I read your email correctly, we're at kind of phase two and phase three of, of that work. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. So bigger picture, you know, Grant Street is is in the process of a of a massive overhaul. And uh, the project right now is really focused between Washington Street and Fordyce Street or Fordyce Road. And uh, in this year, we will be looking at what we call phases two and three of that, which will be the main line pavement. Last year, we kind of did that side street of Williams Street. Uh, to get that out of the way so that we can get kids and parents safely into Central Elementary. This year, we'll focus on that, those mainline pavements. So the the detours will be put in place, and they'll be effective uh, come Monday, the 10th. And essentially, we will be reconstructing that street in two phases. We'll start on the east side of the street and do uh, and do that reconstruction. Then we move to the west side of the street. During that time, you'll be able to drive north through the construction zone, but southbound traffic will be uh, detoured over to East Street. So I want to make sure everyone knows that as they're coming through that area. Probably still be able to get to the high school from the south, driving up Grant Street to the north, like, like you always do, getting to the middle school and the high school. But as you come south, you're going to be detoured over to East Street. So it'll just be one way north as we go through phases two and three, and those phases will switch back and forth between the east and and west sides of the street. And then later this summer, we'll do phase four, which is kind of the intersection of Williams and Ann. We'll close that down after school is out and reconstruct that portion of the intersection right up against the bridge. Is it the infrastructure that's been the, the major component with that? Because going out and taking some some images of those, it sound, looks like there are a lot of things that have been installed under the, the surface of the earth. Yeah, it's, it's much more. You know, we mentioned the paving, the resurfacing projects earlier, and we're proud of our partnership with the Community Crossings Grant Program through the state. But this is a a project that focuses on a holistic approach, not just the pavement surfaces and the Mm -hmm. pavement asset management. But this is a full reconstruction, including uh, including water mains and storm sewers. And uh, we'll be uh, installing parking. We'll be installing street lighting. We'll be installing new sidewalks. So it's really a complete street approach. Uh, We've got federal dollars associated that with that project that's helping us pay for 80 percent of that construction. But, yeah, it's a complete approach. And we're. We've always looked at that, but we look at more of the key corridors uh, like Grant Street, like we've done Indianapolis Avenue in the past. Uh, we've got new grants in place for 2026 uh, that will continue the Grant Street project south to Indianapolis Avenue. We've got new projects uh, over on Witt Road that will uh, reconstruct that in 2027. So a lot of a lot of things going on, uh, and those are bigger projects looking at those key corridors while we still keep focusing on resurfacing and maintaining our pavements. And I'm sure there'll be some pretty pictures that, that take a look at the what the end process will look like, but until then, it's one of those where we need to leave extra time and bring some patients as well, knowing that it's going to be a pain kind of navigating that area as the work's going on until it's completed. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I mean, like I said before, we have to break some eggs. Construction is messy. It's inconvenient. It's dusty. It slows you down. Uh, but hopefully everyone can can see the benefit of that, of having new roads and new key corridors leading to our high school and our middle school. We have a lot of visitors that come into town on Grant Street, and that's that's going to be an important corridor for us to focus on. So I think everyone, big picture, understands that. But obviously, in the short term, there's 
issues associated with creating these opportunities. Everyone, we're talking with Kevin Krulik. He's our city engineer here on the Love and Lebanon podcast. And it sounds like Grant Street's going to be a showpiece when it's all done. Main corridor, as you mentioned, Kevin. And it's going to lead, as you mentioned, the high school, middle school, but also a new elementary school going to be constructed as part of, of the effort. A lot of school improvements are being made and, and set kind of in motion and will be taking place as part of the busy construction season. And it's going to happen in the, the not too distant future. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on citywide, countywide for that matter. Uh, and, our, and our school system is is looking at major upgrades to all their elementary schools. Uh, you know, you're going to see expansions at Harney. You're going to see expansions at Perry Worth, both those under construction starting this summer. You're going to see a new New elementary school constructed at uh, John Bart Road in Fordyce. And we're not done on that side of town either. So as we wrap up Grant Street Phase 1 this year, next year we're going to go into the Fordyce Road reconstruction, which is going to include a full reconstruction from Grant Street over to John Bart. Uh, that with Centenary, that Cedar Ridge, that, that kind of neighborhood abs- there with absolutely. Mental Health America. All yep, that. Okay. Morningside neighborhood, yep. all that area. We're going to reconstruct that road. Again, a complete street approach. You're going to see sidewalks. You're going to see paths. You're going to see lighting. You're going to see trees. You're going to see uh, new drainage and water main infrastructure going in. You're going to see that path then extended west all the way to the East Street path, really linking up some key pedestrian corridors we're always focused on making sure that we're we're making our pedestrian corridors as strong and as accessible as possible you talked about looking uh positively as the glass is half full right now if you live in the morningside neighborhood you're walking on on a street if you're going to try to to get to the park and and do all those things but the, the different approach you're saying is more so keeping the pedestrians and, and bicyclists and those in mind with sidewalks and things along those lines to kind of make it more beautiful, not just new asphalt and calling it quits? Yeah, there's definitely been a shift in infrastructure in the last few years, and we really are focusing on not just cars and moving traffic through our city, but making sure that we've got those alternate modes of transportation mm-hmm. in place for everybody. Whether you want uh, you want a bike to work or a walk to work, or you're sending your kids on a bike or out walking to school, or you're just trying to get to the park, we're just out enjoying enjoying our, our beautiful city as you walk along our trail system. You know, we're, we really are focusing on that. You know, it started a few years ago with East Street, continued into the downtown project. You know, obviously, we're, we're building those facilities into every road that we're doing. We're building new sidewalks on Grant Street. We're building sidewalks and paths on Fordyce. We'll be building paths and sidewalks along Whit Road when we go into that phase. So if you like the way that East Street looks, get ready for a similar look with when it comes to Grant Street and, and Fort Ice, like you're mentioning, and other improvements that are, are going to be taking place road-related lines within the community? Absolutely, the yeah. yeah. Anytime we're doing a full reconstruction, we're going to take that approach. Okay. Uh, a little That's bit been different. widely than, successful. People have liked it I, I think so, you know, and I think people really like we just put the lighting in on East Street uh, with Fort Ice. We'll be doing lighting at the same time as we're, do, re, as we're redoing the street reconstruction. So uh, I think that was wildly successful. I think really, people really appreciate the ambiance, the character that that adds to a neighborhood having decorated of street lighting and that's the kind of lighting we're going to extend throughout the whole city as we begin to re- redevelop streets. Now we're spending our time right now everybody on Ford Ice and kind of talking about Morningside and a new neighborhood Cedar Ridge if we can Kevin kind of hit in all my checklist here I have Sunbrook Sunbrook Villas I have uh, Auburn Meadows I have Angeli Gardens can you kind of briefly talk about some of those that's that's citywide new housing developments and the increased need for housing within our community? Absolutely you know I think we're at a time now now where there is a need for housing and uh, the market is still trying to catch up with demand and uh, we're seeing developers take a really hard look at Lebanon, especially on those residential developers. So we're seeing, uh, we'll see this this year, uh, construction of new phases of Sunbrook, new phases of Sunbrook Villas, Angeli Gardens, uh, there at the corner of Elm Swamp and Anderson Lane. Uh, that will start later this, this summer. Uh, so that's just north of the Chadwick neighborhood. We've not seen filings yet, but we understand that Auburn Meadows will be building at least one new section uh, later this this year. Uh, Cedar Ridge, just off of Fort Ice, uh, will be building Section 3 and possibly Section 4 to complete that. We'll see that how that goes. But I think if you ask any of the residential developers in the area, they cannot build lots or homes fast enough. And that, that's the complete antithesis of, of what we have seen. I, I know when I, I put a picture out or, or the planning office does, the piranha, the chatterati will circle and say, I can't believe you know, these homes are so close together or they don't they don't like it for one other shape or, or fashion and the price and, and that type of thing. But the truth of the 
matter is these homes are being purchased in their lot form before the, the home was even constructed, right? That there's that much interest in these to, to build and, and can't build quickly enough to be able to get people into our community that want to be here? Yeah, a lot of these developers are selling lots before they've even thought about put what home goes on the lot. Yeah, and, and you know, single family lots look different than they did a few years ago. I, I think there's just been a real trend shift on what people want, what buyers want. It's not a large yard to maintain. You know, they want amenities, they want access to trails and paths and parks, and, and you know, they want to spend time in community with their neighbors, not just in a in a large backyard. So you've you've definitely seen a shift in what the market wants. You know, and I realize that's not for everyone, but by and large, that is what the the market is is bearing right now, what the market is asking for, and that's what developers are answering to. You know, I think it's um, I think it's it's always wise to consider that developers really are serving a market not creating a market so if that's hmm. what they're building it's that's not because they're trying to mandate what kind of homes we live in it's because that's the types of homes and types of lots that people are asking for again not for everybody but by and large that's what people want and uh, you're seeing that with you know i didn't even mention earlier the new homes going in off of off of noble street oh yes uh those are those are um that's a really unique product a very narrow product almost almost describe them as disconnected townhomes you know very vertical home not a small home by a lot of standards it's you know 1800 square feet maybe a little above that three bedrooms a single car garage but very narrow lots uh very small small yards mm -hmm. and i have a feeling those are going to go quickly as well and again you know posting any of those uh speculative pictures it's you know met with a lot of uh resistance or doubt that they'll be as popular as i I think, and, and you mentioned that they will be once they're constructed. Yeah, I'm talking with the developers, yeah, that people can't wait to buy these homes. So I think uh, they're still putting infrastructure in the ground. It'll be a while before you see any homes go vertical, but people are already interested in those homes. And I think uh, what's unique there is that's going to get to a, a price point that's a little more attainable for a lot of our residents. You know, those are going to start in the low 200,000s where, you know, most of the homes that are being built in Lebanon right now, I think if you would look, the average is near 400,000, which mm -hmm. is really where the market is as well, which seems crazy to those of us that maybe purchased a home. Uh, I can't believe it's yeah, that. I would never. Yeah. It's kind of uh, the way it is. 20 some years ago when my wife and I moved to Lebanon, obviously we we bought for a lot cheaper than what uh, what a home goes for now. Um, but you could never think to be to buy a new home starting with a one. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. No. And Kevin, as we take the home stretch here, we're talking with Kevin Krulik. He's the Lebanon city engineer here on the Love and Lebanon podcast. You mentioned amenities and would like to talk about a couple of those. It seems like every time you look, you can look and then look away and then look again at Hickory Junction and it, something has changed. Where there, That is, is moving at a breakneck pace. Can you kind of touch on that as well as the bike park? And then we'd like to uh, maybe even talk about some some new jobs and, and things in the business park related to new cold. You talked before we hit record about new cold is already has plans to expand and is, is getting ready to do that as well. Yeah, so many other things going on. I know we're forgetting some. Well, there's so many balls in the air. We're oh, juggling yeah. here. We're going to miss yeah. a couple for sure. But yeah, the, the Hickory Junction Fieldhouse, very exciting. Very exciting for the opportunities that brings, whether that's jobs or opportunities for youth sports and uh, and just to re-engage our youth in, in activities that they're doing in other communities. And hopefully they're bringing some of that back here to Lebanon. So Hickory Junction is exciting. The development opportunities around Hickory Junction for food and beverage destinations, uh, hotels, retail options, those, those are great opportunities that people in Lebanon are, are clamoring for, you know, bring us better and newer restaurants and, and how do we have these opportunities in town? Well, there's, there's one, that, that strategy of bringing that youth sports destination to our community really is a great strategy for bringing in some of those amenities that we we'll all get to enjoy, but it doesn't stop there. There's still development and growth happening in the business park. New Cole just opened the doors on phase one. They're already under construction on phase two. That's an exciting project. That's a really unique project. And um, and that's one of the largest, that will make that one of the largest cold storage uh, facilities in the country. So that's exciting. The bike park, obviously, you know, that's a project we're all excited for. Uh, and we're actually in partnership with the people at New Cold because they need to get rid of some soil and uh, to get ready for their phase two. And they're bringing that soil. Know where they can put it? Yeah, yeah they're yeah. donating <laughs> that soil to uh, to the Stone Eater Bike Park. And that those operations are already beginning to haul that work in. We're still working through our 
IDEM permits on our final bike park construction, but IDEM has already given us a blessing to start hauling dirt in and, and we're, we're under construction there. And uh, so a lot going on there as well. And it's something I forgot and, and wasn't on my notes, but uh, we have a TAC meeting, I believe, next week or the week after. The State Road 32, the Gateway Marketplace project, may be getting a couple new tenants or at least one that, that will be, can't share it yet, but uh, will after the, the TAC meeting and, and things are, are decided there. But a lot of exciting amenities taking place. And as we take the final lap, Kevin, if we can, there are a couple of different projects that haven't started yet but have been you know talked about and one is the the hinky development and the other is the elephant in the room the lily project if we can kind of talk about uh, both of those knowing that the the hinky development will be on on one side of town and lily on the other but both will be tremendously large comprehensive projects and then one april what 14 17 something like that Whit Road closes. That, that's that's huge for the the community and, and the days and weeks and months ahead with that project going forward. Absolutely, yeah. There's well, there's no shortage of of big projects, game changing projects, if you will, um, or opportunities for us. And and uh, the Hinky Development Group and the Waterford Development on the south side of town. That's exciting. They paused that project uh, a little bit over the last year as as material shortages and 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 material pricing was through the roof. Uh, but we understand now they are they are gearing up to break ground next spring, spring of 24, uh, building the golf courses, building uh, the residential lots. Again, uh, there is a, there are retail components there. There are opportunities there for uh, a great deal of benefit to not just the citizens of, of Waterford, but all the citizens of Lebanon. So we're excited to see that happening. Yeah, the elephant in the room, the Eli Lilly site, they've gained approvals for their, um, for their mass earthwork uh, phase of the project. Obviously, they've already gained approval for the vacation of Whit Road. That Whit Road vacation will will include the closure of Whit Road on April 14th, and then they are scheduled to break ground uh, on their earthwork operations on April 17th. So, That's going to be soon here. That's what a couple weeks away. Yeah, we're less, less than less than two weeks away there. You know, and again. Yeah, I talk about opportunities. I think that's that's a great opportunity for the city uh, and for our citizens, you know, to create great great jobs, great opportunities for our our, our citizens, our families, our working class, uh, the next generation of, of, of people growing up in Lebanon. I think that's really what's what is exciting to me when we see these these tops types of opportunities coming to town is the options that that gives people, the opportunities that that gives people. And as we close the book, Kevin, on this episode of the podcast, again, if we can kind of circle back to kind of the the mentality that maybe we should all take when it comes to these construction projects, it's going to be, there's going to be dirty dust and and things floating around. There's going to be a lot of upset drivers and walkers and residents for for a while, but the end result you're saying is, is going to be worth all that frustration or at least ease that pain a bit. I like to say there's, there's not really problems. There's just opportunities. And, you know, we're going to have, we're going to have to go through a lot of issues as we, as we see these opportunities come to fruition. There's going to be a lot of construction. There's going to be a lot of new faces, new people, new traffic uh, coming through our city, a lot of new infrastructure projects that are happening, whether that's city projects or school projects, private development or Eli Lilly or the state road projects around that and the new interchange. Uh, you know, those are going to be tough things to live through. But I think if if we want the kind of Lebanon that uh, that we're hearing so many people ask for, for these opportunities, for whether that's food and beverage and, or housing opportunities or new jobs and better jobs, these are the growing pains that we have to have. And all growth isn't bad, but all growth requires us to adjust and uh, and see that through. And uh, that's what we're excited for is, is, is seeing through that, seeing the opportunities and seeing the end result, which uh, we're excited about. Kevin, thanks for being here on the podcast. Thank you for your perspective and updates on all these projects. No notes in front of you. It's all me with the notes and you've got all this at the top of your head. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> and thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of the Love and Lebanon podcast. More episodes are coming your way soon. Take care, everybody.